Welcome back. We are going to talk now. It's not a long topic, but a very, very important one on the topic of jealousy, mistrust, and possessiveness. I think this is one of the greatest destructive emotions within couples and not even with married people, but among people. Even parents who, with their distrust and jealousy and, and controlling um, behavior are destroying their children. Uh, there's, the, uh, jealousy is really a very destructive uh, emotion. And relationships suffer a lot because of that. And um, with my wife's permission, um, I, I want to tell a little bit. You know, when we got married more than 30 years ago, um, Tisa, I mean, at first we didn't realize it was a problem, but it, it became visible a problem within a few years. Uh, or from the beginning when we got married, that she has a, a, a real problem with jealousy and, and uh, mistrust or distrust in terms of me. And it, it causes, caused a lot of uh, frustration. Uh, you know, this typical thing of where were you and why are you late and to whom did you speak, and you know, that type of thing. And, 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 and little things that happen... Um, you know, I've, I've, we've counseled so many people in line of this. Um, some people are really very weird when they get to jealousy. I mean, they will take their husband's cell phone and check every number that's been called. They will put a tracker on their husband to check him where he's going. And people who will get, I mean, detectives just to check him to make sure he hasn't got the affair. We, we counsel a couple who, this guy didn't trust his wife, so he, he, he invests a lot of money in, in uh, electronic systems to spy on his wife. I mean, the weird stuff that this guy did, and uh, recording machines all over, wherever she speaks, he recorded, sits for hours and listens to, maybe she's going to say something. You know, and um, it's interesting, you know, how people are driven by this. And then you ask, what's the root of this? Why, why do people, why don't they trust one another? Why do you uh, suspect or just do not trust your, your best friend or your children or your, your boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse? Why is this there? Now the Bible says in Proverbs 27 verse 4, it says, No one can stand against jealousy. Uh, the Bible says jealousy is a stronghold. It's a tremendous, powerful, destructive thing. And, and it's manifesting in the fact that I do not trust you. It's manifesting by the fact that I want to control you. I want to hold on to you. Uh, I don't want to let you go. And you find that with a lot of parents who do not want their children to go, they hold on to their parents or on to their children, uh, or either they, they don't trust their children to make decisions, and they want to make decisions on behalf of their children, and they, they don't ever allow the children to feel uh, dad and mo mother is actually trusting me. And because of distrust, you keep your children immature, and you don't allow them to mature and even to make mistakes. And um, in a marriage, this is very, very controlling. And a controlling spirit, it, it, it's so difficult. You know, you get to a place where I remember in the first couple of years, and we quickly went through this, came out of this, but I, I refer to it because it's long time history. But I, I remember, you know, that our that we will go to people, and when we come back, Tisa would be very angry. And I'm not sure what they did wrong. You know, you, you've done something wrong, but you're not sure where was it. And then, you know, she said, but you know, you've spoken to that woman, you looked too long, 
you know, for, to her or whatever. That one was standing too close to you or whatever. And I couldn't even remember some of it, you know. And you get this thing, all right, to just keep peace in this relationship. I may not speak to any woman. So let's stay away from them. If they come, I just run away. Because I, I need to, to protect my relationship. So you, you built in things just to keep the peace in your relationship. Now many people don't, don't do that. But I've tried to do that. And obviously it becomes plastic. It's not genuine. You become superficial to, get, to keep something together that has some, some wound in it. There's some hurt. There's some pain. There's something wrong. And, and we went through a few seasons of this. And, and, and because of our discovery of emotional healing, we, we together said, all right, let's ask the Holy Spirit to show you where this is coming from. And, and Tisa started to do that, and she, she did very well. I mean, the God really started to show her specific things of, of um, rejection, abuse, uh, of uh, parents, father, mother, f- mistakes they made, previous boyfriend she had that, that dropped her in a certain situation and uh, got her to feel that she's not worth it, she cannot trust them. You see, because you take your pain of the past and you project that to your present relationship. And that destroys. Because you get into a relationship now and you bring all the rubbish of the past with. And now the person you're married with must suffer what you have experienced. And God wants you to get rid of that. It must get out. You have to be clean and healed. So this thing is, is really destructive. And we are sharing this while we talk about marriage and family dynamics in this this uh, aspect, um, jealousy is a fear which one has to get rid of that manifests in possessiveness. The root spirit, the root, the root, deep root of, of jealousy is fear. Fear, fear to lose, fear to be abused, fear. The deep thing is fear. So if you deal with this, Anyone who's possessive, anyone who's jealous, anyone who do not trust, the root is fear. If it's demonic, and because some of it is very demonic, the, the main, the prince demon in this thing is fear. So this, this whole problem is a manifestation of the root of fear. And therefore now you have to ask, fear for what? Or where did I get this fear? Fear for rejection, fear for failure, fear to lose you. And normally it's because of relationships that broke. And, and some people brought that fear from parents who divorced. And you bring the, the fear of seeing your parents going out and your parents' relationship or your parents were not honoring one another and there was affairs and things. That fear as a child now you bring into your, your relationship. And now what you've seen with your parents, you actually put it against your spouse, and now you, you, you fear that they might do the same. Or in a previous relationship, even a school relationship. And it happens. You know, you are just a puppy love, young children, teenagers, and you are in love. I mean, I, I, I told my, my children this week, I was speaking to some of them, I said, stand at six, nowadays grade eight. I remember I, I tried to go out of a girl, or I took it to the movies, and I, I, I only managed to get hold of a pinky, you know. <laughs> I was too afraid to get closer to that. N- the next day I got the letter t- to say, sorry, I don't want you. <laughs> and I thought, wow, I was too slow, you know. <laughs> and uh, so you know how you feel when, when someone sends you a letter and says, sorry, we, we break this thing. And we de- didn't actually not have a lot of things, but we broke that thing. And immediately you feel, I failed. I'm not good enough. And a typical thing you felt, you know, th- these girls are looking to the big boys and the great guys and this and that. We are, I'm just not good enough. And so now you operate. The next relationship you start, you, you, you come in with that fear of being rejected again. And if it would happen that this person break the relationship again by some way, now this fear becomes really a big story. And the pain 
And now, now what's happening, if someone say yes, you start a relationship, you, you want to control this person. I want to hold on to you because I'm afraid you will also go away. So now I actually suffocate you with my presence. I suffocate you. I want to be with you all the time. I want to hold you. I want to touch you. I want to be with you. I call you all the time. I actually want to possess you because I'm afraid I will lose you. But by possessing someone, you will lose someone. The moment someone starts this type of relationship where they hold on to someone out of fear, it's, it's a given. You will definitely lose that person. Anyone who, who, who feels, hey man, you suffocate me. You are like a creepy crawly. You suck me, you know, and I can't get away. That person will start pushing you away because that relationship will not last. Because it's built on fear, built on pain and hurt. <clears throat> now in the Bible, we, we read about positive fear, a positive jealousy. And uh, I'm not going into a lot of that. I quickly just mentioned that. Uh, Exodus 20 verse 5. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. So God declared himself to be a jealous God. Now, he, God's type of jealousy is a protective type of jealousy. So in any relationship, there should be a godly jealousy. That's the type of jealousy where I want to protect you, where I want to empower you, where I want to surround you by making it a place of rest, security, place of growth. So this is not a controlling type of thing. God is not controlling you. God is not a controlling freak. He's not in fear that he might lose you. But he's a jealous God who does not want to share you with sin. He doesn't want to share you with demons. He wants you for himself. So therefore he says, I'm a jealous God. And uh, if you are running after demons, uh, the effect of that might be going down to the fourth generation. And the same we actually read in Deuteronomy 4. And then 2 Corinthians 11, Paul says, I have a godly jealousy about you. He's talking about his spiritual sons and daughters. I say, I'm, I'm protecting you of a godly jealousy. You know, typical what a husband feels about his wife or a wife feels about the husband or what God feels about us. I want to protect you. You are my people. And that's the same I feel about this household. My sons and daughters, I've got the godly jealousy to protect them from outsiders, from the enemy, from the distraction, and, and, and so on. So there's a godly, positive uh, type of jealousy. Roman, Romans 10 verse 19 and 11 verse 11 and 14, um, Paul is talking there about a different kind of jealousy. He says, people are getting jealous because of your salvation. That's, an, that's a good jealousy. That people are getting jealous because you are saved. Because you are doing well. Because they see God is in your life and they get jealous for what you have. Now that's a good one. We want them to get jealous. When people watch you and your children and your marriage, they must get jealous and say, Hey man, I also want that. So you hear this is a positive thing. Then negative jealousy we see in the Bible. Genesis 30 verse 1. Rachel was jealous about Leah. Uh, the two wives of um, Jacob. And there was a lot of bitterness in that. Jealousy. Fighting. I mean, it's abnormal that one man ha has two wives. And I mean, that's why there was jealousy and bitterness. That always happened. I mean, even those people that say they have more than one wife, you will not find any two, three wives in one house living in peace. It's just abnormal. It's not godly. It cannot work. Acts 7 verse 9 uh, talks about Joseph's brothers who was jealous about him. You remember, because of jealousy, they threw him in, that, in, a, in a pit, in a well, and eventually sell him to the Egyptians, traders. Because of jealousy, because there was the unfair love from the father, but they were jealous of what he attained, what he was standing for. Philippians 1 verse 15, Paul's ministry 
Um, he said, people are jealous because of what they see in me. I'm an apostle. He said, and people are coming against me. They are working against me because they are jealous of what God is doing through me. Now, this is a negative jealousy. Where people come and they do not want you to be blessed. They don't want you to prosper. So they come with a negative jealousy. They want to take it away. So they were criticizing Paul and they were bringing lies against Paul because of jealousy. And then James 4.2 uh, talks again about jealous about one another. People who are jealous about what you have, you know, in, that, in our sense, jealous about your car, about your wife, about your children, but the negative thing. I don't want you to have that. If I see you, you are wearing new shoes, I, I, I'm gossiping about you and think, hey man, what, what, where do you get that? Uh, I, then I buy myself better ones than what you have. Um, because I'm jealous, and that, that you find in this world. All right, reasons for jealousy. can be a negative spiritual influence or even demonic. So it, the root of that uh, is fear, rejection by parents or love of marriage partner. And all those things could add up to that deep fear and jealousy in our lives. As a result of shock or hurt, whenever someone does something that really hurts you, Je jealousy most of the time comes in when, when people are married and one of the two starts a relationship affair. Uh, it triggers immediately jealousy. And most people will go through a season of possessiveness and distrust and jealousy the moment there was affairs. And they need a lot of healing to get out of that, to get it completely out, where I can again say, I trust you. I actually don't trust you 100%, but I trust God in you 100%. Because we still make mistakes. But we need to get to a place where we trust God in us. God in you. And even if you make a mistake, I still trust you. That you will do your best. So how do you get out of this jealousy thing? How do you get rid of it? We are nearly finished now. Because I want you guys to pray in your groups for one another. How do, how do you get out of jealousy? How do you shake it off? Number one, by recognizing it, admitting it. And if any of you have that, I mean, you would know. If you are possessive, controlling, you want to control people or those ones close to you. All Jezebel, Jezebel spirits is those who are dominating, controlling. They, they, they are operating from a position of fear to control. Um, you would know if you control your loved ones around you or you are possessing them, you, are one, you do not want them to go and you want to hang on to them. If you recognize that in your life or in your relationship and you realize it has caused a lot of trouble fighting in your relationship, then this is the time for you to get free of it. You have to get out of it. It's not difficult. It's actually very easy. But you have to allow the Holy Spirit to show you where it comes from. Just a, to say, I've got it, is, that, that, that will not bring freedom. You need to go to the root. You get to the root through the process of emotional healing that we have taught you already, where we ask the Holy Spirit to show you the root. And He's always faithful. If you have jealousy, you just say, Holy Spirit, show us. Whoop, and He will show you. I've counseled some people in the last couple of weeks. Oh, I was so amazed how God is faithful. He just every time show. One of the counseling sessions was very difficult. I thought, where am I going to start with this? And even before I went into the session, God gave me a, just an idea. And when I asked that thing, wow, the whole thing came up. It was just so God. And it just, I can't tell you that story. It's too shocking. One day I'll do it in another environment. But it's, it's just amazing how the Holy Spirit will show you where something comes from. He's always faithful. And it's not difficult. You just say, Lord, show me where is this coming from. And he does it. And maybe there's more than one. And normally when, when there's deep jealousy and distrust, it has built up to one, built up on another one. And there's three or four of them that you have to deal with. 
You have to forgive those people. Allow the Holy Spirit to come. Take that fear out. Heal it. And, and you do it with each one of that. And therefore, in our environment here, and those who are listening, find someone who can pray with you. Don't try to do it on your own. It's far more powerful if someone pray for you. The healing is quick, effective, and it stay. And the fact that you've opened up to someone to say, please pray for me in this area will intensify your healing. It will keep with you, and it will go with you. So it's actually so easy. But it's, it's a necessity. You can't miss on it. No jealousy in your life. And you must say to yourself, I'm not going to allow fear to rule my life. I will love without fear. And that's what you find in Genesis 1, when, when Adam and Eve was in the garden. It says, therefore a husband will cleave unto his wife, and the two of them will become one. And then the last verse there says, in, in Genesis 1, 2, sorry, it says, the two of them were naked and were not ashamed. And that, that old dimension means there was total openness and no fear. Total openness, no fear. And if we can come in our relationship to a place, no shame means no fear. No pretension. Where there's no fear, man, then you are healed. Then you are complete. You need to come in your relationship in a position of no fear, no shame, no pretension, no hidden agendas, total transparency, nakedness, total transparency in a relationship, and that relationship blossom, grow, because of no fear. And that's where God wants to get you, but you need to work. And those of you who are single, get this stuff out of your life before you want to get married. God will actually not give you the right person until you've done your homework. The right girl or husband is not coming because you haven't done your homework. And some of you are very quiet now. You want to blame God? Do your homework. <laughs> God is never late. God is always trustworthy. He's faithful. He will do exactly what He said. You just do your homework. Get healing. Be complete. Get fear out of your life. Deal with hang-ups. Deal with weaknesses. Deal with all the things in your life. Now, next week we're going to go into the dimension of what children and, and teenagers are going through in their growing process in the relationships in a family, in terms of children um, raising kids, raising children, teenagers. We're going to look into the dynamics of, of developing the character and the life. And, uh, and uh, so next week we're going to focus on that. So uh, now in your groups, I want you to minister and pray for one another. You have uh, 10 minutes or so. Don't rush it. Um, ask each other, what can I pray for? And um, be open enough, be transparent enough to just say, hey, I, I found, find this difficult. I need to get rid of this thing or that thing. If you don't feel freedom in your group now to share it, actually say, I want to see someone to help me with this thing. But you have to get free. You have to break free. All right, bless you. See you next week. Grow, be healed.